Hello everyone, this is Dr. Jay Mehta here from Mumbai and in this video, I am going to be answering a very basic but a very confusing question which a lot of patients have and that is, once diagnosed with azuspermia, which is the doctor that they should consult? Should it be an IVF specialist who predominantly specializes in all techniques of assisted reproduction like IUI, IVF, ICSI or any other such procedures? Should it be an endocrinologist who is a doctor who is specializing in the treatment of all endocrinological related problems for example thyroid disorders, diabetes, disorders related to the prolactin as I told you, you know it is something to do with the brain or should they consult a urologist or more specifically an andrologist. An andrology is a subspecialization of slightly advanced urology. Now this is the common question which is going to strike patients who are predominantly trying to hunt for doctors on their own. That means patients who are trying to log into Google or Facebook and are trying to identify which is that doctor who is going to help them out with their problem the best. Remember there are certain advantages of somebody who is an IVF specialist but is also trained in andrology and advanced procedures of male fertility. Of course there is an overlap but there is a huge advantage with an IVF specialist who is trained in andrology. The predominant reason for that is Whenever you are treating a patient with azuspermia or zero sperm counts as we all know, it is not just the male partner alone whom you have to concentrate upon and treat. The treatment is always done for a couple in fertility. And because the treatment is always directed towards a couple, an IVF specialist or a reproductive specialist who specializes in the treatment of women or the female partner with all the protocols that are needed and also has a thorough interest and training in andrology is the doctor who is going to help you out the most. At this point, let me also clear a big doubt which people have is that usually an IVF specialist cannot do andrology and an andrologist cannot have an IVF clinic which is absolutely wrong. All clinics which are established are done with the sole purpose of helping out the patients. And usually in all clinics, it is always going to be a team of a reproductive specialist, a physician, an anesthetist, an andrologist, if need arises, an embryologist. All these different doctors are going to join hands so that they can give you the best fertility outcome in your case. It is also important to note the last point that whenever we are looking at treatment of azuspermia, a patient must try to consider a clinic which specializes or clinic which has doctors who have a special interest in the treatment of azuspermia. Obviously when a clinic is handling a heavy volume cases for azuspermia, their discrepancy, their experience and their individualization regarding azuspermia is going to be slightly better as against clinics who are handling a low volume of azuspermia. For example, as a clinic, we do close to 25 to 30 patients of azuspermia every week, which is probably one of the largest numbers for azuspermia in the country. And as a result of this, we can offer a lot of fine tuning to patients who are presenting to us with azuspermia. But if I cut the clutter, before I finish, I would like to present two important points to all the patients who are diagnosed with azuspermia and are seeking out treatment options. Remember, when treated correctly, the sperm retrieval rate in patients who have obstructive azuspermia is going to be close to 95 to 100%. When treated correctly, the patients who have non-obstructive azuspermia can expect a sperm retrieval rate of approximately 50 to 55 percent on an average depending on case to case situations. There are so many patients of azuspermia who present with endocrinological problems and when that aspect is corrected they can be treated simply with medications. 
there are also so many patients of azoospermia who have genetic causes of azoospermia who have undescended testes and in such situations despite the best efforts the sperm retrieval rates usually are below 25% but when treated correctly a patient with azoospermia should have a good hope of having an offspring or a child using his own sperm and i believe that is the, should be the predominant mindset of any patient diagnosed with azoospermia and approaching a doctor to do his treatment i'm sure there are going to be a lot more questions as far as azoospermia is concerned you can post them in the comments me or one of my team members will try and get back to you as quickly as we can